Hi, welcome to another edition of The Recap. I am Jermaine Hatton and today is the 18th day of June 2017. Today we will look at the poem The Woman Speaks to the Man Who Has Employed Her Son. The poet is Lerna Goodison and she is Jamaican. She is known for much of her work on sexuality, equality, love and motherhood, especially on femininity. And this poem here is a personal favorite of mine particularly because it speaks of the horrid truth of what is happening in our Caribbean households. The fact that in our Caribbean households, women are forced to play the role as mother and father. It also talks about what happens with our children, especially our boys, when the father is absent in the home. And this here is just, just reality. If you're a boy and you're listening to this, I challenge you to change this in your future. For notes in this poem and all other poems, check out my friend Antoinette Blair. She is doing a good job on her website. A link to that will be in the description. The woman speaks to the man who has employed her son. Her son was first made known to her as a sense of unease, a need to cry for little reasons, and a metallic tide rising in her mouth each morning. Such signs made her know that she was not alone in her body. She carried him full term, tight upon her heart. She carried him like the poor carry hope. Hope you get a break or a visa. Hope one child go through and remember you. He had no father. The man she made him with had more like him. He was fair-minded. He treated all his children with equal and unbiased indifference. She raised him twice, once as mother, then as father set no ceiling to what he could be doctor earth healer pilot take wings but now he tells her he's working for you that you value him so much that you give him one whole submachine gun for him alone he says you're like a father to him She's wondering what kind of father would give a son hot and exploding death when he asks for bread. She went downtown and bought three and one third yard of black cloth and a deep crowned and veil hat for the day he draw his bloody salary. She has no power over you and this at the level of the earth. What she has are prayers and a mother's tears and at Nay City she uses them. She says psalms for him, she reads psalms for you, she weeps for his soul, her eye water covers you. She is throwing a partner with Judas Iscariot's mother, the thief on the left hand side of the cross, his mother is a banker. Her draw though is first and last, for she is still throwing two hands as mother and father. She is prepared, she is done, Absalom. So looking back at the poem, The Woman Speaks to the Man Who Has Employed Her Son, we see that the title is somewhat deceptive. Deceptive in the sense that it gives us the idea that the woman is directly talking to this man who has employed, you know, we're putting the word employed in uplifted commas, because it's telling us that he provides some kind of help to the family by giving him a job and clearly we are not seeing any form of a job in the poem so that's an example of irony we will talk about that a little bit later on but the title is a misleading deceptive one because clearly the woman doesn't appreciate this man for giving him giving her son this employment so we in the first stanza we see a mixture of metaphor to show us exactly how this woman felt when she became known to herself, when it became known to herself that she was pregnant. So she says that her son, it says that her son was first known to her as a sense of unease, lit cry for no reason. So I know women would agree with this, that when they are pregnant, they tend to be very moody. And <laughs> and no, if you uh, you hear a woman or you witness a woman in her early stages of pregnancy, yes, they appear moody. And why is that so? It's it's a result of all the 
the surge of hormones going through the body so you she can be very happy now then she can be very sad and she can cry and be all dramatic but that is just the the hormones that's not the woman so it says that the the metallic tide rising in her mouth each morning that metaphor there is showing us that the morning sickness i know we all are aware of that it's when the woman pukes in the morning as a result of the pregnancy uh, the change in the fact that she's not the only person in the body and she's feeding now for not one but two may result in that so they say the sign made her aware that she's not alone this is the part i like in the first answer here she carried him full term it means she carried him the entire nine months there was no seven months or eight months it was a full term baby tight up under her heart that can tell us two things it can tell us one that the pregnancy the belly was a big one that there wasn't enough space there so the, the baby was raised quite a, a, a little into her stomach and you can also tell us that the amount of love she had for this child even though the child wasn't born as yet the amount of love she had for that individual there so that we'll take that there for the first answer moving, moving on now we see simile she carried him like poor carry hope <laughs> now this woman it's as though she couldn't do anything else for herself at this point and all she can do is carry this child and pray that this individual is her passport out of poverty and she's hoping that this child will be the better individual this child will be the best he can be they were so many hopes and dreams and that's all we have when we're poor hopes and dreams so she's alluding to that here the part that says he had no father of course the child must have had a father there must have been a man to get for her to get pregnant to begin with but the idea that it that paints that is painted there is the fact that the father was not present in the relationship yes she got pregnant but the father was not present in the relationship he didn't play an active role in the child's life either uh, before birth or during growing stage the man she met she the man she made him with had more like him <laughs> and this here is a, is a very very interesting culture in the Caribbean uh, he says he is fair-minded is fair-minded that's sarcasm it appears to be as though she's praising this man for being a good father but in other words she's chastising him remember they said earlier had no father so how is he fair-minded if he wasn't active in the child's life so he had more like this child means that what he made children here there everywhere and then he dumps them he left them he leaves them there and he went about his business that is quite sad but it's the reality of what happens not only in the Caribbean but around the world so that there goes right into the saying that treated all his children with equal unbiased indifference telling us that he didn't play an active role in any of their lives she raised him twice once as mother and then as father now i'll stop there and do a little lecture <laughs> 30 seconds or so it's important that we understand that a woman cannot possibly father a child only a father can father a child you can disagree with that how much you want to but a woman cannot father a child the woman might play the very best role there is for her to mother the child but she can never be that father right so yes she had to try to be the father but she couldn't as a result of her cannot or of she not being able to become the father or to be the role of a father this boy in question here went outside the home to find this father figure 
and that is where it is important in this poem here that's what we have to understand so now he went to find a father figure because as this boy is growing as children grow they often look to find someone they can emulate or someone they can learn something from and boys need to learn to be masculine from a man not a woman cannot possibly learn it from a woman so this boy went out there to find someone but then she's saying going back there set no ceiling to what he can become to give us the idea that she had so much hope and dream in this young man she wanted him to probably be a doctor a healer a, a pilot all of this she she didn't limit him she she gave him the idea that he can be anything he wanted to be and then now this boy just goes and tell her that he's working for somebody in a gang and that this person cares for them that is irony no one can care for you and give you a gun you understand what i'm saying that there tells us that at some point you are going to die they they often say you live by the sword you die by the sword so obviously if he's given a gun at some point he will die by the gun so that's irony there by the when the boy says he cares for him or he values him so much he can't possibly care for you by putting you in arms way and that is what the idea that the mother is trying to emulate to the son so coming down to the end of the poem a series of biblical allusions are given firstly it starts off by referencing luke 11 verse 11 that is where they are questioning the role of a father in the bible uh, if i'm to read a part of it it says which of you fathers if your son asks for a fish will give him a snake and uh, it goes on to talk about if the individual asks for bread you will give him a stone so they're actually questioning the role of the father here so here she's she's saying uh she's asking rather what kind of father would give a son hot and exploding death remember this individual is giving a gun to her son and then the son is saying he's like a father to him so she's questioning that father figure how can you be a father figure when you give the person a gun? The gun will obviously lead to the death of the individual. And that is the point she wanted to bring over. Then she goes on to say, she went downtown and bought three and one third yard of black cloth. So this tells us, and some teachers might say that the boy died. But no, I don't see anything of it meaning the boy died but it's a case where she's preparing for that death because as i said earlier you live by the sword you die by the sword you live by the gun you die by the gun so she is cognizant of the fact that the boy will die as a result of his company and she's preparing now to bury that boy when he dies so she's preparing she's buying her cloth she's buying her hat and she's saying that when he draws that bloody salary we know the salary is what we earn at the end of a, a period of work. So bloody salary is telling us that he will draw his death at the end of doing this job. She goes on to say she has no power over you and this. So she's talking to the man here. She's talking to the, the person who employed the son. She's saying that she has no power she can't control what you do or what you tell her son on the earth but she has God and she has her prayers and she will bend on her knees and she would pray another biblical illusion here goes on to say she would say Sam for you uh, she would read Sam for the boy and then she would say Sam for the man as well so this gives us the idea that the mother is a prayerful woman this is why I'm saying a man, a woman cannot possibly father a child because the woman, women's nature and women if you are offended by this by no means should you be offended but a woman's nature is supposed to be an emotional one they're supposed to teach their sons or their daughters compassion and stuff like that she cannot and this is what we are seeing here she's praying she's fasting she's being all religious the role of a man now is to teach that boy identity teach that boy to be masculine teach that boy to respect women you cannot possibly uh, expect to learn that from a woman right so that there is the important role of a father and there's no there's no um no idea of misfortune 
that I am doing this on Father's Day is particularly a plan that I intended to do this on Father's Day because in the Caribbean we have a culture where boys just happen to meet a girl today, love her tomorrow, have sex on Thursday, and then when she's pregnant just beats out. Uh, and that is the idea that leads to, that is the attitude that leads to situations like this and that is what as a Caribbean people we must come together and eradicate from our society. So going back to the poem, sorry there for my lecture. <laughs> Uh, she says psalm for him, read psalms for you. That, you know, psalms is a part of the Bible that is for protection and for retribution and stuff like that. So she's show you, showing you how compassionate this woman is, how prayerful this woman is. Like many other women, and like many other women of the Caribbean, prayerful, religious, pious, and so on. She says he, she weeps for his soul. This they might be the only part of the poem that people might think the fact that he died. No, it weeps for his soul. Mummy is in the company of this bad. He's in the yeah company. I use the word company. He's in the company of this bad influence. That there is a situation where his soul is being wrongfully led. So as a result, this woman is this religious, pious person here. So. Obviously, she would weep for his soul because he obviously is not following the path she wants him to follow. He's not religious. He probably never accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. So this here is that part where she's acknowledging the fact that he is of the world. She is throwing a partner. Now, this is a very important part and not a biblical illusion. With Judas Iscariot's mother. Now... This partner is an informal saving scheme or a saving club and it's common in the Caribbean because where people don't often have such big salaries so what they do is basically spend turns exchanging money and I say exchanging money probably not the best words but it's a case where like five persons are in this club in Jamaica uh, it's called a susu no, yeah, Susu, I think. It, no, I think in Jamaica it's called partner. Uh, in Barbados it's called a meeting. And in other parts of the Caribbean countries it's called Susu. Uh, in Guyana it's called box. We know it as box. So we're throwing a box, we often say. So it's a case where we have like 10 people in this saving scheme. And every month we all are going to put a particular sum of money towards this box so everybody puts ten dollars every month or every week whenever we draw pay and every time we put a money a particular person draws or a particular person collects the sum of money and then everybody will continuously put until everybody had a chance to collect a box hand or a partner hand or a meeting hand or a susu hand so it's generally we're lending money to each other then by turns Alright, so I hope you have an understanding of what the box or the partner is they're talking about here. And what you find happening, and we will see this alluding to later on, the persons who are not very uh, trusting, we put them to the end of the box or we put them to the end of the partner because we are not really sure if they will spend their entire months with us. We are not sure they will beef with us for the entire saving scheme. We don't really trust them. We don't want to give them money too early and then we never hear back from them, right? So we put them last. Persons we don't really trust. So you say she's throwing a partner. They're saying she's in a plan or she's in a partnership with Judas Iscariot's mother. Now we know that Judas is the person that betrayed Christ. So for her to, to say she's in a partner with the mother of the person who betrayed Christ is as though to say that she herself will be betrayed eventually, inevitably. Uh, so it's the thief on the left hand side of the cross, his mother is the banker. So it's as though this woman is being dealt double blow here. She's in a, the partner, the banker, the person who's keeping the money is also a crook. <laughs> and it's as though everybody she surrounds herself with are not very trustworthy 
and she is suffering in that regard. It says she her draw is first and last. So they're saying she's draw, she's throwing two hands. The hand means she's throwing two among two times the amount everybody else is throwing. And if you're throwing two times the amount or you're throwing two hands, it means you will get to draw twice. Right? And the first one she draws, she's drawing that one as the mother and the next time she draws she's drawing that one as a father now that part there is interesting because that is where the father was to contribute and if you notice they're putting that father down at the end to tell us how they don't really trust the father the last hand is the father's hand Remember we told you about that trustworthiness earlier now they're putting the father down at the end to show us that the father in the picture is not really trusted she's prepared she's done what is that prepared they're telling us it's telling us that she's she's prepared for his the boy's death she's telling they're telling us here that the death of the boy is inevitable because he's dying he's gonna die by the sword since he let he lived by it and absalom absalom is a beautiful word here it, it, it shows um handsome nature it was i think it was the son of king david but it gives us the idea that the people in the poem might not be who they claim to be. It might not be the one who is trust, to be trusted. In the Bible, Absalom, the person, uh, betrayed this father. So here, painting the same idea to us that somebody can be betrayed by some someone can be betrayed by someone they love right so sorry for all the noises in the background we can compare this poem to any other appropriate poem in a syllabus by looking at the themes death love survival desires dreams and childhood experiences and anything else your teacher might have taught you I have decided to compare CXC poems once a week, so you can expect to have a new video every Sunday. Uh, go ahead and like this, comment, tell me what you think of this review, subscribe so you can get updates on future poems. The next poem to be done here would be Little Boy Crying. Uh, a link will be in the description as soon as it's done with the review and thank you very much for listening to that if you have listened to the end of this congratulations i see you really want to pass these exams thank you very much for listening you were with me jamin hatton goodbye